Well, getting back to one of our top stories, China's Citic Bank makes its debut on the Hong Kong and Shanghai markets tomorrow. The IPO is the world's biggest this year. To talk more about it, Charles Chaw, director of China Knowledge Consulting, joins us for more analysis. Charles, good to have you with us. Are you expecting a spectacular debut? And what happens after that? Will, will it be able to attract or maintain investors' interest? Uh, because it's a bank stock, uh, there's a, some sort of guarantee that you will got at least 10, 20 percent. Already in a, the grey market, people are trading 10, 10, uh, 5, 10 percent. So it doesn't come as a surprise, 20 percent in a single day tomorrow. Hmm. What about Bocom? You look at the amount of funds that is attracting the amount of interest. Is the interest in the stock justified? Do you like Bocom? Uh, two things. First of all, I think most important is that too much cash savings among the Chinese. Hmm. So it's a bank stock, they'll punt, they'll go for it. Um, because it's the top five banks in China, um, I see a lot of potential because uh, it's a big, it's the best proxy to the econ economic growth. Look at the first quarter, 11.1 percent. And Charles, it's Michelle here in the United States. Is that enough to support the stock, though, especially if the Chinese government starts to take more aggressive action to slow down the economy, which normally affects banks? There's no clear indications they are very aggressive in uh, curbing the, the, the growth. I think if the, the economy is going, going to grow at 10, 11 percent, uh, I think there shouldn't be any drastic or, or, or actions to really to have a big uh, interest rate. Maybe a 0.2 percent, 0.2 percent, yes, there, there might be an interest rate increment. But other than that, uh, they keep it at this because um, let's look at China as a whole. Now, the, the Western concept of China growth, GDP growth, of, let's say 11.1 percent, they're so concerned. What's the concern about when the, the concept is not about the coastal city of Shanghai, Beijing, or Guangzhou. Look at the central China, the western regions, and the northeastern regions. They are all are keen and, in fact, desperate to grow. Uh, no concerns about the growth, uh, Charles, I guess, because, as you say, the central regions are, you know, absolutely, uh, are firing it. The, I guess the concern is, is in that rush for growth, you know, how many bad loans are being made that we won't know about until some years down the road? You see, um, you know, if you talk about 60 billion FDI a year in, in such a big country, uh, it is it's not the it's not a big amount, and uh, and and you know, domestic consumption is also something that the Chinese Chinese government is trying to do to, to boost the consumption. Now, let me tell let me tell some tomorrow. And for example, to, to, tomorrow I'm, I'm going back to Shanghai. Basically, uh, you know, there's a golden week. I, I'm there to talk to my the, the analysts there, and some of them are going there to buy houses. You know, they are, you know, this is one of the uh, you know the way that they're spending money. Uh, you know, the, the government is encouraging them to to invest. Mm. So, are banks still the best way to play the growth in China? Right. Yeah, uh, it's the best proxy. It's, it's the safest for, and somehow I think there's like some sort of guarantee from the, the central government. Uh, it will not let the bank fear for, for sure. Mm. Okay, Charles, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much for being with us today. And that was Charles Shaw, Director, China Knowledge Consulting.